All right. Welcome everybody to our last edition of Decaf Coffee with Carlson. Hi, mom. How are you doing? <laughs> Oh, uh, always nice to see my mom on here. Um, uh, this is our last edition of Decaf Coffee with Carlson. So uh, we're all, of course, hoping that um, a year or eight months from now we are in person, um, but we still will probably try to figure out how to have some virtual guests because that's been super, super fun to see folks that normally can't attend in person. So um, my name is Deborah Bouton. I'm the Chief of Staff and Senior Woman Administrator here at NIU, and I'm also Really fortunate to be the support administrator for women's basketball. So good to lead this program for you all tonight. Um, cool, we have lots of different uh, events tonight, uh, a couple changes here and there. So hopefully this will be a really fun show for you all. Um, again, we're live here from the Nelson Suite in the Convocation Center um, and at beautiful, beautiful venue. We could turn it around, you could see the arena, but this is, we talked about this. I don't know if um, we mentioned about coming up here during when we have fans again. Um, I'm all in to rent a facility. So you guys come up here, we rent the Nelson, put some money together. We're gonna have a really good time when we're back in person. Uh, I wanna thank again, Northwestern Medicine for their support of this show and everything they do for us. We actually have Jay Anderson on. I'm gonna introduce him uh, officially here in a minute. He's gonna come on and talk a little bit about Northwestern Medicine and the role that uh, his organization plays within our department and really within our community. So we're excited to have him. Um, wanted to give a quick fan update. Unfortunately, we're still in the same mode we were uh, last time we met um, at this time still no fans um, every time I feel like I'm a broken record because I'm asking all the time do we have fans do we have fans can we have our you know uh, student athletes or have our parents here and it's just it's just not yet not yet not yet so um, hopefully we continue on in some really great phases with this um, uh, pandemic uh, and we get together really really soon um, Quinn has put on a graphic to uh, talk about the Husky app. Um, so this is something we've talked about on every single show. Uh, make sure you download the Husky app. This will not only be important now as we continue to not be able to be in person, um, but also it's really important uh, when we get back in person. This is also, if you have this now, I think Quinn just put the link in there on how to get this. If you have it now, if you've seen Huskies win, uh, you get free medium tots if you live here in DeKalb. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out in other places. So. Coach Carlson tried it out, it works. You can get a free medium tots with another order at the Sonic in here in DeKalb. So check that out. Um, NIU Basketball Weekly, so that's something we started. Um, that's released every Saturday at 11 o'clock on YouTube. Um, Quinn's gonna put that link in there too. So if you're not already a YouTube subscriber, I know all of you can do it. Uh, push the little link, push the subscribe button, and then you get updates on when we put on new videos. So including NIU Weekly and, as far, and other videos we put on from time to time. Uh, how to watch and listen. So again, no fans quite yet. We're not in person here, um, but we do have opportunities to watch on the ESPN platform. So if you can take a look at that, figure that out. Uh, also on the radio here in town, uh, WLBK, and that radio broadcast streams through the app for free. Um, so uh, check that out uh, as far as paying attention and tracking on our games. So we talked last month about gymnastics starting up. They had their home debut on January 31st. They uh, stormed over Bowling Green. So that was fantastic here in the Convocation Center. And then volleyball um, had their home debut um, last weekend and they split with Toledo, but a super great fun match uh, took Toledo to five and took it that first first day. So um, I know there's a lot of women's sports fans generally following all those. So appreciate all the support. I wanna let you know that we are going intend on hosting our golf tournament this next uh, summer, this coming summer. Um, it was a really great success uh, last summer, even with some of the COVID restrictions. So hopefully six months, uh, four months from now, it'll be even better. Um, so right now we've, we've pinned in a date of June 18th. So if you're a golfer, come out. If you're not a golfer, come out. Um, we'd love to have you um, on that day. So write that into your calendars. Um, coming up just on the calendar, as far as events, uh, National Girls and Women's in Sports Day is actually on Wednesday. And uh, we uh, unfortunately couldn't have anybody in person. Um, we usually have a women's sports clinic where we highlight all of our women's sports and kids come in and do skill work and such. Uh, but this year it's all virtual. So if you are on our Facebook uh, um, platform or Twitter or Instagram or anything right now, any of those three for sure, uh, check it out. There's some work at home video, work, work out at home videos. I believe there's the video of Shelby Coker and the behind the back thing she did last game when she did the thing and then she poofed it out and Michaela Brandon scored. I believe that's on the video. So check that out. And, and I expect everyone on the call to be able to do that next time. 
Um, also, February 1st started Black History Month. And so uh, we're going to do a series of recognitions, the first of which uh, is going to honor our first ever women's black basketball player, Sonia Kreider. Uh, she played here of 1983 and 80 uh, to 80. Nope, that's not right. When did she play? Uh, it's on there somewhere. 81 to 84. Sorry about that. Um, and really, I mean, you can see the accolades here. Third time in block shot, third all time in block shots, um, six in sing single season field goals. Um, really, really phenomenal and very accomplished um, student athlete here at NIU. So we're going to honor her actually at the uh, game against Buffalo on the 13th. So that's 11 days from now. So maybe maybe things look, look different and people are here watching in person. If not, I'm sure you'll see it on social media. So uh, check that out. Um, before I introduce Jay, I didn't want to mention a little bit of changes in our format tonight. I'm very, very excited about this. So we are going to um, have Jay come on and talk about, uh, again, Northwestern Medicine and his organization here in town. And then we're going to bring Coach Carlson up. And Coach Carlson and I are going to try something. We're going to do a little bit of, I'm going to interview her, and she's going to tell us all about basketball. So I'm going to do my best just to say all the right basketball terms and do a really, really good job. So um, we're excited about that. So we'll see how that goes. And I know uh, folks in this call will give us some good feedback if that's something we do uh, again. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, Jay Anderson is, uh, he is here on the call. I want to give him some little accolades here. By the way, he has 500 plus followers on LinkedIn. I don't know if any of you all are on LinkedIn, but that's a lot. Um, I think I have 20. So I clearly need to do some work there on, on LinkedIn. Um, so Jay Anderson, he's the president uh, of Northwestern Medicine Kishwaukee Hospital and Northwestern Medicine Valley West Hospital since May 2017. Um, he's a grad of Miami University, 92. We don't hold that against him um, most of the time, so we appreciate that. And also got his MBA in finance and marketing at the University of Chicago. He is currently also an educator at Northwestern, which we did not know. That's why he always talks up about the purple probably, um, which is phenomenal. We don't hold that against him either. Um, and really just a great supporter of our community. This event particularly, um, and also a really phenomenal uh, contributor to our Northwestern Medicine Performance Center, um, which was unveiled, uh, I feel like right before, I feel like, I feel like right before COVID, <laughs> um, not, too, not too long. Um, so he was able to uh, generously donate quite a bit of funds to help us re-energize our sports performance center and also a nutrition center that's connected, that's over in the uh, Chessick Practice Center. So Mr. Anderson, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing, really good golfing partner really good golf. So we, I do owe you that. We need to get that back together. So without any further ado, Mr. Anderson, you have some words. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. All right. So Deborah says really great golfing partner. If you check uh, with coach Carlson, you'll find out that she has beaten uh, Deborah and I both of the last two times that we've played. So uh, I'm not quite sure how good we are. Uh, but just want to say good evening to everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, uh, Deborah. And let me just kick off by saying, um, thank you um, to the DeKalb County community. Um, your support of, of the local caregivers and the local care team has been immense uh, throughout this pandemic. This journey has been one that none of us have done before, um, but we were able to do it together because of your support. Um, there were some very difficult months along the way, um, but the staff would come in each and every day and, and talk about um, how supported and loved they have felt, all the love they have felt by the community. There were lots of food donations and other support that I will assure you got many nurses through um, and staff and physicians through some really uh, long times. And now we're at a different season this pandemic. We know um, our ability to care uh, for the patients in the community, our confidence in that um, is very high. And that's really been the partnership within the, the community and all the community resources as we, we go into this next season, which is really lots of testing and vaccines, et cetera. And a shout out to um, the uh, DeKalb County um, Health Department, um, Cindy Graves and Lisa and her team have been really phenomenal in supporting um, just the, the caregiving uh, within this county. As Northwestern Medicine, we're a $6 billion organization across all of Chicagoland. We see lots of different counties. And in my conversation with my peers, a common theme is, wow, we wish our county was as organized. We wish the um, the community, the business community, the academic community, and the healthcare community had come together like you guys are experiencing out in DeKalb County. So just shout out to everybody in this call and thank you uh, for your support. 
Uh, I will tell you at Northwestern Medicine, we haven't been in idle during this pandemic. We've got some other exciting things you'll see as you come to, uh, hopefully you don't have to come see us. We actually prefer that you not need to, but if you need to, um, we've really advanced our G, uh, GI platform, our urology platform. You're gonna see um, some work starting to happen as uh, any, any of you that have been to our emergency room lately, you know it's, it's starting to feel worn after seeing about 30,000 patients a year um, for the last, uh, what's it been, 12, 13 years since the new hospital, there's just a wear that's there. And so you're gonna see us doing a full over $10 million refurbishment of our emergency room. So things to, to we get excited about. Again, I hope you don't have to come see it, but if you do, we will take great care of you. And uh, I hopefully you'll be very pleased with the care you receive. Uh, but that's, the, that's really not what we're here to talk about tonight. What we're excited about is um, being a proud sponsor of NIU women's basketball. Uh, well, actually this night, NIU women's basketball and NIU athletics um, as a whole. Um, this is something we've needed. We're excited to see return to sport uh, by NIU. And I wanna give a shout out to a couple of our care team, uh, Dr. Uh, Rajendran, who oversees the student health clinic uh, there at NIU. She has led uh, Sarah Real, Kelly Collins, um, Jennifer Anderson, that whole team leading the testing process, which if you corner any of the coaches and players, they will tell you it's a thing, uh, the amount of testing that they have to do. Um, and that's really been coordinated by uh, Dr. Rajendran and her team. And then also team physician, Dr. Babka, uh, just a lot getting everyone back in conditioned and back to sport and being ready to do that has, has really taken a huge partnership. And, and Dr. Babka has been so pleased to be a part of that. He, and, he loves this work. He is so excited to be back on the court and couldn't do it without Phil Voris and his whole team of trainers and the whole coaching staff and staff at NIU. It's a just, to be honest, it's a partnership we deeply enjoy. It means a lot to us and we're proud to be a part of it. Um, but, but I would, I'd be remiss if I didn't do a special shout out to NIU women's basketball. Um, I, this is a personal thing. I will tell you, we've just been longing for something to really get excited about. And I think sports have struggled to find their way. And then at this breath of fresh air that happened at the, at the end of the last calendar year was women's basketball coming back into the mix and seeing what this team is doing on the floor um, it's just been something to get excited about. It's Saturday, Saturday afternoon, ESPN three watch, uh, watch parties at my household, um, each week. However, well, I guess it was a Wednesday game, but I don't know how I missed the 104 point game at central Michigan. It's one of my questions for later. How do you score 104 points uh, in a game? Um, it, that's it just absolutely phenomenal. Um, but to see them, you know, at six and three, right in the hunt. And then you look at Bowling Green on top with their two losses and you know that, Hey, we were one of those losses. And so um, it's just, it's exciting to see what they're doing. And I try to figure out, okay, what, what feels a little bit different? And I don't know if coach will agree that this is part of what's different, but not only is the shooting percentage lights out, you know, clearly in this whole off season, the, the, the team shot a lot of hoops because um, it's just phenomenal shooting percentages, but the rebounding on both sides of the court, you, you just never feel like you're out of a game because the amount of hustle and energy they're showing um, just gives a lot of confidence as we watch these. And I know they've got some big games coming up. So um, looking forward to watching those. Well, let me be ready to hand it off to Coach Carlson. Um, I'm sure you all know Coach um, well. Um, you know, 18 seasons of coaching, six here um, at NIU. Um, something you may not know, uh, I get to see Coach in a couple other settings. I've had her come to the hospital to talk to uh, my leadership team. She's done a, a phenomenal job multiple times. My nursing leader also brought her back for a focus time uh, with our nurses. And um, every time I hear her, and I've seen her not just the hospital setting, but in other settings, every time I hear her talk on leadership um, and motivation, I take away something new. We just have someone special in Coach Carlson. And so I'm um, excited to hear from her tonight and continue to see what she's doing. A little fun fact you may not know about Coach Carlson other than her phenomenal golf game. Um, in college, she was a multi-sport player. Um, she was a very, very good softball player too. Apparently was a shortstop in softball. Why, why would we expect anything else? And in her final year, she was the champion NCAA athlete of the year. Um, she's just someone special in everything that she touches. So let's get this ball over to her and uh, get to hear about uh, NIU women's basketball here for the next uh, rest of this hour. 
Thanks, Jay. All right, welcome back, everybody. Okay, we are we are socially distanced. You can tell this. We are definitely, definitely apart. All right, so we're gonna give this a go. She's very excited about this. Um, hey, coach. Hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about January. We have uh, five games actually to talk about since we last met. Um, teams four and one, um, and six and one in the month of January. What do you think the biggest factors have been to success? Well, we've had an opportunity to talk about our success in January um, in the media and different plat in different platforms, which has been a lot of fun. And when I think about the month as a whole, uh, I think the, the thing that stands out the most is uh, this is a group that very much understands their role. Uh, we will go as, as deep as 10 and in any given night, it could be a number of different people that step up and it's not, they, they definitely haven't just been starters. And so I think that has its advantages in a lot of different ways. Obviously, it makes us harder to guard. Um, everybody has their own unique skill set. Uh, and I think our depth also is paying dividends during the course of 40 minutes. But also, I'm really hopeful that it pays dividends down the road um, as it keeps everybody a little bit fresher. I also think this is a group that's really unselfish. You know, they can celebrate each other as much as they can celebrate their own success, uh, which I think has shown on the court in a lot of different ways. Um, and Jay mentioned, there's a couple of things statistically that really stand out. I think um, obviously our ability to score the basketball and shoot the basketball, and then probably a little bit unique this year um, is our ability to rebound the basketball really on both ends. And, and I talk about rebounding a lot as a, as a hustle stat. You know, it doesn't take a lot of necessarily God-given talent to be a great rebounder. It takes a lot of hard work and determination. And, and a lot of people can do that regardless. Um, I think we have players on this team that really take pride in that. And again, that's made a huge difference in uh, our ability to get more opportunities to score on the offensive end and also minimize the opportunities that the other team has. So, you know, and I, I also believe that my staff has done a phenomenal job in preparation for um, the opponent coming up. So there's, there's things that are um, two to three fold, I think, in success. Preparation for the opponent, which is a really big factor. Um, continuing to instill confidence in our in our players uh, as as far as um, not just shooting the ball, but really what their role is on the court. Um, and I think those two things, when they come together, uh, really can give you some some positive results. And so those are some of the things that when I really reflect on, especially the month of January, how are we six and one? Um, those are the things that come to mind. All right. So what you all been waiting for? Let's talk about Central. Um, what an amazing game. I paced and paced and paced until, you know, four minutes into the game. Um, so I normally pace in during these games and I'm nervous and then my hands are sweating, but this one obviously looked a lot different. Uh, scored 104 points. Like Jay mentioned, six Huskies in double figures, 11 different players to score, 19 assists, 12 turnovers, and you out rebound Central Michigan by 13. Um, 15 threes, another huge number. So everything seemed to be working really well. What was that like? You know, the one thing that we talked about before the Central game um, is we needed, and we obviously haven't had any success against Central since I've been here. Um, we talked about not just showing up to play, but, but really showing up to win. Um, and I think the players kind of took that to heart. Um, we felt like we had enough talent to win. Uh, we felt like we had put ourselves in position with some good practices to be able to execute to win. So now it just became a little bit of the belief that we can beat Central Michigan. Um, it was also one of those games for 40 minutes that like everything we touched, it just went well. You know, you mentioned a ton of statistics, uh, which are all great. Um, but it was probably one of the easiest games, to be honest with that I've ever had to coach because no matter what was called or what we were trying to do, it seemed like the team that was on the floor at any given time was so locked in that it, it just all happened. Um, you know, we kind of waited for Central to make that run in the second half. And I felt like every time they tried to, we had an answer. Um, it was a lot of fun, to be honest. I mean, it would be fun to have those kind of statistics, score those many points against anybody. But to have that happen against a team like Central with all the success that they've had, not just this year, but obviously in the past, ever since I've been here, um, 
it, it was a, it was a night that most of us will remember for quite some time. It was great, and then, of course, everybody's wondering wondering how cold uh, how cold <laughs> was the water. Yeah, if you noticed, obviously after the game, um, the players thought that they should uh, throw cold water on me right from the cooler. So yes, it was cold. Um, you know, I don't. I don't generally go to the locker room after games, which is a little bit unique. A lot of coaches will go and address the team before they, they go to their different media obligations. Um, but a, a good friend of mine said one time that they thought it was better that they really go back, analyze the film, and so that the information that you're giving to the team is in fact more truthful and less emotional. Um, and so I thought a little bit about that. One, there's there's plenty of media obligations to get done, and the players don't necessarily need to wait around till I'm done with that. Just like the media shouldn't necessarily have to wait for me to address them while I'm addressing the players. So it kind of killed two birds with one stone. And so the players knew that I wasn't going to the locker room, and so they thought that throwing the water on me on the court uh, was going to be the best option, which. I mean, I'll, I'll take that any day with that kind of performance for sure. That's great. All right, so after that huge win against Central Michigan, we went to uh, Miami. Uh, really another big number on the board, scoring 87 points. Shelby had a new career high of 29. Michaela with a double-double um, and shot 40 free throws, which at one point or another, I thought it was like a free throw contest that we were winning. Um, you know, tell us about that game and, and your thoughts on that. You know, one thing that you really worry about, I think, after a huge win like we had against Central is the emotional letdown um, the next time you compete. Um, and, and you see it in sport all the time. And so I was really proud of this group um, to really stay focused on the task at hand and not let that happen. Miami game the first time was not the prettiest game. Um, obviously, you can tell that by a combined 61 free throws that were shot. It was physical. At times, it was ugly. But again, we scored 87 points, so we definitely were able to put points on the board. And, and, I, and I think really understand that it was a possession for best, possession for possession ball game. Um, and so to go to Miami, which again, we haven't necessarily played very well there at times, and to be able to come out of there after 40 minutes of basketball with a win, uh, especially after the Central game, I think was really important. So after Miami, we have a game that is supposed to be at Ball State, but they can't play. Um, so then we scramble around and say, well, why don't we just go play Toledo? Uh, played at Toledo um, without fans, um, but before we get to that piece of it, you know, how hard would it to shuffle games between, you know, thought we were at Ball State, now we're at Toledo, how hard is that transition? Yeah, pre-COVID, those things usually don't happen. They might happen in outdoor sports, you know, those schedules change all the time. If I talk to our baseball coach, our softball coach, or, you know, even soccer sometimes, those outdoor sports are looking at schedules and they are just all the time. Uh, we play indoors, it's usually about 70 degrees, like those things don't change in basketball. So COVID has, has thrown a little bit, obviously a wrench into that as well. So um, knowing that Ball State might not be able to play, um, you know, I called up Trisha at Toledo because they were also in a situation where they probably weren't gonna be able to play and said, hey, does it make sense for us to play since we're both available, healthy, have the, the opportunity? And so we did. Um, usually that's, that's not easy. The nice thing is we'd already played Toledo. We had played them uh, before the holidays. So there's some familiarity there. Um, and we really had a couple of two days to prep, which is kind of normal during the course of the season. So um, I can't blame the loss on preparation. Uh, I can't blame it on it's a, an opponent that we didn't think we were going to have. I can blame it on poor performance, you know. And again, we were just lucky to be able to play. I, I thought that was really important. Um, but it was really the first time that I felt like our offense wasn't able to just kind of get us out of it, especially in the fourth quarter. We didn't shoot it very well. Um, we had opportunities and, and sometimes that happens and it's just, we've gotten used to not having that happen. Um, but unfortunately it did. Uh, but again, we were kind of able to regroup and go on, but, but we were happy at least that we got to play that night. All right. So here we are again, we are going to our next game. We're going to play Kent state at home on the 23rd and then we don't play Kent state on 23rd. Uh, you know, what, what do you do with your team during that gap? What is your approach during the to off? Unexpected off time. Yeah, again, that's not normal. Um, you know, the conference season, you're usually playing Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, and it's really consistent that way. Um, I think what it did do is it gave us an opportunity to, to reflect a little bit more on us. You know, what is it that we can do at practice that is, is refining the things that we think we need to get better at? Um, it also gave us an opportunity to get a little bit of rest. 
You know, there's certain times during the course of the year where fatigue is a real thing. And so we were able to shorten practice a little bit, get a little bit extra rest, focus more on the recovery piece of it, um, as well as really focus on us and then get ready for the next week. So I think all of those things, you know, it's all perspective. It's all how you look at it. You know, you can look at it and feel sorry for yourself about not being able to play or you can use it to your advantage any way you can and, and turn it into a positive. And, and I think we were able to do that. So let me go on to Akron. We play at a 12 p.m. game there. They had a virtual education day, which I thought was a really great idea. Um, Shelby has 19, Asia double-double. I actually told her in the lobby she was going to have 17 and 17. So uh, she was 13 and 14. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it, I guess. Uh, Aaron just missed a double-double with nine points, 10 rebounds. We out-rebounded them by 25, which was remarkable. Um, and held them to 32% shooting. So uh, I know Akron was a, a bit of a challenge, especially an early game. Can you talk about that one for us? Yeah, I mean, anybody who follows uh, women's basketball in the MAC knows that regardless of what the team's record is, um, you know, you better show up with your A game or you're going to get beat. And so Akron had only won one league game, uh, but we knew that there was uh, definitely pieces there where they could be really effective. Um, I thought the 11 o'clock game for us uh, was fine. You know, it's another thing. Our game times have been all over the map because people haven't had to necessarily cater to fans because there hasn't been any. People have been flexible with their game times uh, and it's been a little bit more indicative of what either works on campuses and or what works best for the traveling team. It can be for a lot of different reasons. And so we've had to and been able to adjust to that as well. Um, the, the number that you mentioned, you know, we were out, out rebound them by 25. And to really think about that, that's a that's a huge number. Um, they also only shot 32%. So we're holding them to 32% shooting, not giving them second chance opportunities. I mean, you can live through some mistakes when that number is so significant. And I think that's what we saw at Akron. Um, that gave us an opportunity to get into the flow a little bit on the offensive end um, as we were able to kind of keep them at bay. And especially in the second half, we were a lot better. So then Miami comes back here on Saturday, um, second time seeing a team. I'm always interested to see what adjustments we make or what adjustments they make as far as playing the same team uh, so close together. Uh, Shelby had 26, Michaela had 10. Asia, if you all watched, was in a bit of foul trouble, so didn't, uh, didn't get to play much of the game. So tell us about uh, that home game against Miami. You know, Miami's a, a really big and physical team, and that was true when we were in Oxford, and it was definitely true when they came back to DeKalb. Um, and, and I thought in the first half, again, we struggled with that a little bit, not just taking care of the basketball, but their length and their size uh, inhibit us from doing some things at the rim. I also think they did a really nice job defensively of mixing up their coverages and covering our three-point shooters, and we had to kind of figure out a different way. And again, I think Adam did a phenomenal job, especially in the second half, second half of making some adjustments where we could get back to getting the shots that we knew we could have success with. And so you saw that happen. Um, you know, again, like the first game, there was a lot of points scored at the foul line. And that was important for us to be able to take advantage of that. And then, you know, we were, we were able to out rebound them also by 10. Some teams are going to be obviously more difficult to rebound against. And with Miami's size and their physicality, uh, we were going to have to really be good on the glass. And I think we were. All right. So it's one of my favorite parts of the show. We're going to talk about some more numbers. I like numbers a lot. Um, so tell us about league stats. Where are we at right now? What's, what's the big number game here? Well, as we're about halfway through, um, I do love to look at conference only stats because that's a, I think that's comparing apples to apples. So if you look at some of the team statistics, uh, right now we are third in um, offensive output at 77 points a game. Uh, we are fourth in defense, giving up 69 a game, which I don't know, to be honest with you, since we've been here, if we've been in the top four in defense. So I I'm proud of that. I think the players are proud of that. I'm really proud of Jane and Lex because they really coordinate our defense and they've done a great job there. And then again, offensively, really getting back to scoring the basketball at a pace that I think we're capable of. Adam's done a great job of running our offense. So to be third on the offensive side, fourth on the defensive side, um, warrants a good result, obviously. And then the, the other st two statistics that I think are significant from a team standpoint is teams are only shooting about 26% from three point range, which is best in the league. And then we're shooting about 41% from three point range, which is second best in the league. So at the 
the three point line, there's a huge discrepancy. That same discrepancy is true in rebounding the basketball. Um, you know, we're out rebounding our opponents by almost 14 a game, which is far and away the best in the league, um, either first or second in pretty much all the rebounding categories. So that as a team has been huge. If you look at some of the individual statistics, um, Asia is number five in rebounding uh, in the league at about nine a game. Michaela is right behind her at eight a game. Um, Kay also is uh, sixth in three point percentage at 44%. And again, for a, a forward and somebody who plays the post position for us, um, that's a great number. And then John A actually leads the league in three point percentage at 50, 50%. Um, and then you also see uh, Shelby's statistical numbers. You know, those are, she is in the top 10 in just about every offensive category in the league. Right now, she is fourth in scoring at 22 points a game. She's ninth in rebounding because of her ginormous stature. I'm sure that that's why. But she gets us about seven boards a game. Um, eighth in field, field goal percentage, third in free throw percentage, uh, ninth in three point percentage our three pointers per game and then seventh and assist. So again, as we go, uh, Shelby has the ball in her hands. She's our facilitator. She runs a show um, and she's been able to do it obviously really efficiently throughout the first half of the season. Well, we have BG tomorrow. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we came off, this is one of our first games in this month that we won um, and really kind of set things going, set a good tone for our team. Um, gave us some confidence, I think, that we really, really needed. Um, so what are you looking forward to for the BG? Yeah, I think this is another kind of measuring stick for us. Um, well, at the first time we played Bowling Green, I said uh, after that game that that was the game that really instilled the confidence in this team that anybody who stepped on the court, we were going to have an opportunity to beat. Um, at the time, they were undefeated in the league. We handed them their first league loss. Um, they're a tenacious defensive team um, and obviously have a lot of weapons on the offensive end as well. Um, so the rematch here, I think, is, is very similar to when we played them the first time. You know, both of us have had great Januaries. Uh, they continue to be at the top of the league with only two league losses. Uh, and so I think both teams are, are kind of uh, looking at this game as, you know, are we for real? You know, are we able to continue on with the success that we've had? Um, and so it'll be, a, it'll be a good defining game for us. And again, it'll jumpstart what we hope to be a really successful, successful February um, with some huge games coming up. So it'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Uh, we also announced today that we are going to be at Ball State on the 8th. Uh, so Monday, it's going to be a, in the middle of the day game. So about um, so 1 o'clock Central Time at Ball State. So that's going to make up from uh, earlier, earlier in January. All right, coach, I know you like to talk about this. Why don't you give us an injury update? Well, I don't always like to talk about it, but <laughs> I feel like that's where you guys need the inside scoop. Um, luckily, we have Sid back on campus. So you'll get a chance to hear from her in a little bit. Uh, her rehab is going awesome with her knee. And again, having her back is uh, puts a smile on all of our faces. And I think she's happy to be back as well. And then that besides just the bumps and bruises of what you see mid season, um, we've been able to stay pretty healthy. And again, I think that's a huge factor in our success, being able to have our pieces available um, on most nights to go. Uh, and also because of that, we've been able to sustain some of those bumps and bruises. If we do miss a player uh, for a game, we've had a lot of people step up in those situations as well. So the injury report looks good. The injury list looks short uh, and we would like to keep it that way. All right, so that was our presentation. I think it went really well. Um, so coach is going to bring up some of her staff here in a minute. So we're going to have a little bit of transition time. Be right back. All right. Oh, look how cute we are. Come on through. Who did? We're not socially distanced. So we'll keep on that All right, so you guys had an opportunity to uh, have Adam talk to you a little bit, then Lex talk to us a little bit, uh, Jane talk to us a little bit. So I want to have the rest of my staff here. Um, and I won't make them individually do a presentation, which I know Quinn's really happy about that. Uh, but I do have a couple of questions for them. Um, and they can give you a little bit more insight into really their uh, biggest role uh, as part of our, our staff. But I'm going to start by having them introduce themselves. Uh, and then I will have a couple of questions for them. So you want to start? Uh, hi, I'm Quinn Rear. Um, this is my fourth season here at NIU, and I am the Director of Operations. 
Hey guys, uh, my name is Ali Lehman. Uh, this is my first year as a graduate assistant, uh, coming back from 2013 and 2017 season. Hello, my name is Corey. I am, this is my first year as a graduate assistant. Uh, this is my sixth year at NIU. I am in grad school now, so. All right, so um, I'm gonna start with Quinn. And I'm gonna, my first question is, um, I'm going to have her talk to us a little bit about the biggest challenges that COVID has presented for her in her job, especially on the road. I would say um, the biggest challenges is just one is being able to adjust to change. Like you'd mentioned, Coach, um, our sport is normally we set a schedule in summer and I can start planning hotels and buses and getting flights all lined up. And so that's pretty much done before we even step on the court to play our first game, the whole season is done. So this year, just being able to plan that trip to Toledo in a couple of days or plan our trip to Ball State next week in a week, um, that's probably the biggest challenge and change this year. And then also just being organized with the different states and different schools that have different um, protocols that are in place. For instance, we went to Michigan State, um, we had to test six times Leading up to that, the hotel wouldn't allow us to eat together, so food's individually packaged. Um, and then just being strategic at the hotel with who roommates are um, in terms of contact tracing and all of that. And then when you go to the arena, um, seeing what the bench setup looks like and uh, if parents are allowed in a pass list, all things that in a normal year our parents are allowed, the benches all look the same. Um, so just different things that are just more detailed, I guess, this year um, than any other year. I can tell all of you that Quinn is the absolute best Dobo in the world. So her organizational skills and ability to, to forward think and plan all that stuff is, is outstanding. I mean, there's, I don't worry about any of that. I probably should, but I know that Quinn's thinking about it way before I ever am. So she does such a great job with that. I'll come back to your second question. I'm going to, I got one for you, Al. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> What's been the biggest difference um, or maybe some of the most challenging differences between being back at NIU as a coach as opposed to when you were here as a player? All right. So you look at it from the coaching side perspective. Uh, prepping four games now, there is so much in-depth planning that I didn't think of as a player because you guys did the work for me. You told me about the personnel, and I had a main idea of the game plan, and then I just played, and it was great. Loved it. <laughs> I love it now, but it's pretty cool to see uh, the different offenses ran in, kind of scheme against uh, what the opponents have. So that part's cool. And then another difference is my body is not the same as it was <laughs> five years ago. So trying to jump on the floor with people quick like Jaden. <laughs> That can cross me up. My, my body is a little different now, and I think I'm aging. <laughs> That's okay. We still appreciate what you do. Yeah. Okay. All right, Cora, what do I have for you? Uh, you've been around this team in different capacities for three years now. So Corey mentioned he's a graduate assistant now. When he first was part of our team, he was, he was a, a practice player. And then the following year, he was a manager, and now he's a graduate assistant. So he has seen our team in a lot of different, uh, from a lot of different lenses. My question is, uh, what have you noticed about this year's team that's maybe different or special in some way than the other teams that you've seen in the last three years since you've been here? I remember one of my first practices coming to NIU as practice player. I remember uh, Michaela Voyage, she would like start off practices, not practices, but before the coaches came, she would just break down uh, what was going on during practice or like what mistakes were happening last practice and she would address them. And as a captain, she would just go through all those little details. And then the next year as a manager, I noticed Abby and Allie, they weren't as um, one man show as those as Michaela Boyd, but they were more so like uh, leading by example. And I noticed with uh, this year's captains, Grace and Paulina, they're following more so with Allie May and Abby, um, just leading by example. And I think it's really showing where we have this deep rotation right now, and it's not like this is one player just doing their thing and everybody's watching. Like it's by committee, and I think it's coming from our captains because it's a led by example kind of uh, situation. That's good. That's good. 
All right, Quinn, my last question for you. Uh, what do you love most about your job? And you can answer that uh, pre-COVID if you want. You don't have to say this year, but what do you love most about your job? Well, all around, I love the people I work for, you. Um, and the staff that I get to work with every day, and obviously the players um, being around them, I, that truly is my favorite part of my job, is just be, spending time with you guys, um, spending time with the players, getting to know them, getting to watch them grow um, four years through college. Um, but I would say that's my favorite part of my job. In terms of my actual duties, I mean, I love organizing. Um, which is my job, so. <laughs> and she's really good at it. <laughs> we love you too, Quinn. <laughs> All right, uh, my last question is, uh, what do you see in this team maybe that resembles the 2017 that went to the MAC championship and we played in the WNIT? Uh, I actually think it's pretty cool. You see a lot of unselfish plays throughout the season. I, I think the coolest part was, yeah, shots were falling against Central Michigan, but you guys see the joy that everyone had on the floor celebrating each other making the one more pass. And I think to go along with that is people are understanding their roles and they're taking pride in their roles. So, you know, if they come up short of what they what they anticipated uh, for having that night, then they really kick themselves and they improve the next day. So I think those little bits of improvement and, you know, sharing the fun, having joy, spending time with each other on and off the floor, I think, you know, that's gonna lead to success and move us postseason. All right. I like it. It's good. Hey, thanks. <laughs> All right, Corey. So you're our math and stat guy. Um, so Corey is um, working on his uh, master's degree in analytics. And so he is, he's got a statistic for everything you could ever think of. <laughs> um, but talk a little bit about some of the analytics that you love to dive into uh, for this team. And then what areas that, that basically we really excel in statistically. So I remember close to conference play, uh, our offensive rebounding percentage, like when our, when our, when our, when we are on defense, uh, we used to give up a lot of offensive rebounds and I would point it out during meetings and I'll be a lot of rounds, but like I <laughs> point out in meetings and, um, we started to make it a point of emphasis, uh, during practice, uh, to really, uh, make sure our guards and our posts would box out and really attack the uh, basketball. And it helps where we have Shelby and Kayla and AD or Aaron. Like we have a lot of great rebounders. And now we are, like Coach said, we're one of the best, if not second best, in a lot of uh, rebounding categories. And the second thing that I really like uh, doing when I don't have much to do around the office, I really like just having a deep dive into basketball and analytics. Uh, right now, I'm like thinking about how uh, Shelby or Jaden or whoever, how they can get, uh, can take advantage of the defense and who they're taking advantage of, if it's Toledo or if it's Lockett on Toledo, it's Byron on Toledo, whoever it is, it's really being detailed about everything. And that's really what analytics is. It's just having a detailed understanding on everything and then just counting every single time that happens. That's all it is. <laughs> I tell you what, the information that Corey can provide for us as coaches to, to again, kind of dive into it and look and see, you know, what is really going to be, because basketball can be a game of inches, you know, or a game of, for sure, a game of possession. So if you can steal a couple of possessions because of the information that you have, um, obviously that's the difference in winning and losing sometimes. So I've really, really enjoyed the information um, that he's been able to provide statistically and analytically as we continue to grow in some of the areas. And I know that uh, the rest of my coaches have really enjoyed having that information as well. You know, he mentioned the rebounding piece of it, um, but also on the offensive side, I know Adam and he have done a ton when it comes to how can we be more and more efficient and what does that look like? So I, I have, analytics this year is, is way more than we've ever done. And it's really been um, extremely beneficial, I think, in the preparation for um, upcoming opponents and really us getting better. So this rounds out my staff. Again, you saw the for my uh, full-time assistants. This rounds out my staff. I love my staff. You know, they're more than just obviously uh, people that work for me. They're definitely an extended family. Uh, we have a lot of time, a lot of fun, and it's not just <laughs> basketball. I mean, we we enjoy each other and we give each other a hard time all the time. Uh, and I, I think that's really what makes uh, being in the office every day is a lot, a lot of fun. Like. Quinn mentioned, I can't imagine working 
with any other group. So now you've seen everybody, you've got a little glimpse of them more than just seeing them on the sideline. Um, so when we are back in person, uh, make sure you shake their hand, they do a great job. All right, so I'm gonna now um, transition and bring up our freshman class and we'll talk to them a little bit. So we'll do another shift. All right. Ooh, that's short. <laughs> sit up straight. Come on, sit, we can sit up straight. Oh, Jay, you're even pulling that. So this is our freshman class. Um, they are they are not a very loud group necessarily. Oh, Sid, you're pretty loud. I have faith in you. So I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. Um, tell the tell you a little bit about them so you can let them know name, where you're from, major, all that fun stuff. They already know you're freshmen. So you don't have to tell them that. All right, so Jaden, you can start. Hello, I'm Jaden Marable. I'm from Bolingbrook, Illinois, and my major is business. Wave, Jaden, so they know that you're the one talking. There we go. That's Jaden. Hi, my name is Brooke Stonebreaker. I'm from Brazil, Ohio, and my major is graphic design. Hello, my name is Sid McCray, and I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I'm majoring in biomedical engineering. All right, so this is our freshman class. Um, many of you have seen them do different things, or maybe have seen them before, but not probably as familiar as you are with the rest of the roster. So I have a couple questions for them. Um, Jay, I'll start with you. Uh, how do you think your success and the, su the success of your team at Bolingbrook helped you be ready to contribute right away as a freshman? So yeah, in high school, I played alongside a lot of future D1 players who were very talented and very competitive. And throughout my high school career, we played a lot of tough Illinois teams. And we also traveled to different states and played a lot of tough competition. So I believe all those things contributed to our success and my success as well. And just our playing style at Bolingbrook, it was very fast. We liked to get out and transition. So just that aspect of the game also trans um, contributed to my success here at NIU. Absolutely great. That's good. All right, Brooke, tell us a little bit about your family full of uh, former college athletes. Did you always know that you were going to grow up and be a college basketball player? Um, I did not always think that I was going to be a college basketball player. Um, I would say growing up, I spent a lot of time in the gym with my mom when she coached. And I remember going to all my, a lot of my aunt's uh, college basketball games. So having those like experiences and influences growing up is always something I'll look back on. Um, I would say my sophomore and junior year of high school is whenever I um, thought more about playing at the next level. And then after having the um, experiences I had with my AU team after my junior year, um, that just um, went back to and um, made me more excited to um, play at the next level. And yeah, we're excited you're here. <laughs> so her mom played at Bowling Green, but we don't hold that against her. It's fine. She's a husband now. All right, Sid. Um, you know, obviously the unfortunate injury this year made your freshman year a little bit different than what you had hoped for. But if there is a positive for this year, uh, what would it be? Um, I think I've really spent this year taking advantage of the time that I have with my teammates, getting to know them better, getting to know their strengths and weaknesses. And I've also really learned what it means to like be a part of this uh, women's basketball program here at NIU. And then in terms of on the court, I think I've gotten more comfortable with uh, our defensive philosophies, um, how we structure our offense, and I think all of those things will contribute to me making an easier transition uh, back to the court this fall. For sure, for sure. Jaden, what's your favorite thing about road trips so far in the MAC? Um, I personally really like to travel. That was one of my favorite things in high school and AAU. So, so far, my favorite thing would be just seeing other campuses and seeing other facilities. I like seeing many different courts. My favorite court so far in the MAC would probably be, um, I shouldn't share this, but it would probably be Bowling Green. <laughs> That's okay. You can say that. Besides your court, Bowling Green. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, Brooke, what have you enjoyed the most about your time here at NIU so far? I've enjoyed um, definitely the team most. I think especially this year with everything going on and COVID, um, it's very, it's really good to have the um, 14 other, 13 other um teammates you get to see every day plus the staff and you know that you're going like you have those friends and people to go to if um 
you need something. So that's really nice. Sid, what do you most look forward to next season um, with what you've learned this year? I think this is a pretty typical answer, but I'm really looking forward to game days. Obviously, I've gotten to experience them from the sideline, um, but I'm really excited for the opportunity to participate in shoot arounds and all the pregame preps and be able to run out onto the court here um, at the convo, hopefully in front of a lot of fans. So that's what I'm really looking forward to next year. I do have one more for you. So during this whole injury, um, which one of your teammates do you think has been the most supportive throughout and why? I think I've been really fortunate to get the support of a lot of teammates and my coaches. But I would say that John A and Aaron both provide a, a very unique perspective because they both went through something very similar to me. So they've been able to be very supportive. Um, they've been able to celebrate when I make small little achievements. Um, they've been through the process, so they know what I'm going through mentally and physically. So they've been really helpful and uh, really there for me to answer any questions that I have. And then I would say on a day-to-day -day basis, these two here have been kind of taking a lot of the load, whether that's carrying food for me from the dining hall, making sure I have a ride. I mean, Brooke carried my suitcases for a full weekend. <laughs> so um, I've been really fortunate to have the support of a lot of different people. All right, everybody, this is our freshman class. They're going to be around for a while, which I couldn't be more excited about. Um, obviously, seeing, seeing them continue to grow on the court um, is going to be amazing. Uh, and they've been able to, in different ways, obviously, been a part uh, really early in their career of what we're doing. And, and you can tell um, they're, they're very well-rounded. Um, they're perfect fits to our program from a culture standpoint. And um, I think they'll get more and more comfortable talking to you as they get older. So uh, I think now it's time if anybody has questions for me. So I'll let you guys go. And I will actually stand up here. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sure there's questions, right? Quinn, what do you have for me? All right, the first question, um, we'll kick it off with a freshman question since you just finished with them. Um, will the freshman this year be freshman again next year? And how does that work with COVID? Yeah, so everybody is essentially granted another year of eligibility. So yes, from an eligibility standpoint, the, these guys will be freshmen again. And then we have two incoming freshmen. So that just makes our freshman class a little bit larger, but that, that's also true of anyone um, on the team. So any, anyone is eligible to come back in their same eligibility status as this year. So um, there's obviously some comfort in that, especially as we continue to be more and more successful um, to know that the pieces that are here can remain. Um, and hopefully we can continue to build on that. You know, I mentioned rebounding um, when Deborah was was talking about some of the statistics. Uh, it really can be as contagious as anything else. You know, people talk about shooting is contagious. Um, and so once a few start to go, uh, it seems that um, that catches on. I think rebounding can be the same way. I also think that, um, and I think Corey mentioned this, we have uh, some people on this team who are instinctively really good rebounders. And those people, that we talked about are on the floor a lot. So Asia, um, just because of her strength and size in the bottom half of the lane, she also has great hands that makes her a really efficient rebounder. I think Aaron and Michaela and, and Shelby especially, those three have an innate ability to track the basketball. And so they can read it off the rim probably better than a lot of the people that are on the floor with them. And so that gives them um, kind of a head start and they're able to track it down. So. There's a combination of a lot of things, I think, that has given us um, the rebounding numbers that we see, both individual efforts. I think, um, obviously, we talk about it all the time, and so there's a sense of pride there. And then they know and see how big of a difference that can make in, in order for us to be successful on the court during the course of 40 minutes. Going off of that, um, Erin was flying around in the Miami game. Has she always been a good rebounder? You know, she really has. Um, and, and the beauty of that is her knee injury, I think, 
has not taken that away. You know, you see Aaron flying around now um, after um, sitting out last year with a knee injury, and she she definitely trusts that knee. Um, she trusts that she's able to do the things that she could do um, before the injury. And that's, that's great to see, because not only does that make her a great rebounder, but that gives her the ability, again, to get to the basket, um, to play defense, to spread the floor. I mean, she just adds a completely different dynamic to our team uh, that really we were missing last year. Um, and it's great to see her back. Next, uh, has it been a priority to defend the three-point line this year? You know, I don't know that we have necessarily set out to say we're going to be the best at defending the three, but we do work a lot on containing the basketball. And I think what we see is because we've been better at containing the basketball, we have minimized the opportunities for other teams to cause us to play in rotation. And that might sound kind of complicated, but it's really not. If you keep teams out of the paint and you can stay in a five on five situation where there's not an offensive advantage, then you're likely to be able to defend better um, on the perimeter. And I think that's been the biggest factor in us being able to defend the three point shot. A few more. Um, you've played in some big games in the convo with the band and a lot of fan energy. Um, how are you guys keeping up the energy without fans this year? Well, I think the biggest piece of that is understanding that we have to essentially bring our own energy. And so the bench understands that. I think there's been times where it almost sounds like there is people in the combo when our bench is, in, is loud and energetic. Um, I think that comes natural for some players and those that maybe it doesn't come natural for are like jumping on board. Um, and at this point, we've done it enough that we know how important it is. And so I think collectively as a unit, um, this team has done a great job of bringing energy for each other. It doesn't take the place of fans though. I can't wait to have everybody back. Next, um, are the players trying too hard, um, which is leading to an elevated turnover number? You know, it's interesting. Well, let's see, we've almost talked an hour and we haven't even had to talk about turnovers, but I guess it's, it's only fair that we do. Um, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think um, when we go back and kind of stat our turnovers, we're turning it over in just about every way imaginable. And when we look at it, there's some turnovers that you that you can kind of live with, like hustle plays that end up, you step out of bounds or hustle plays that end up in a jump ball that you don't get or making the right read that gets tipped. Sometimes you, you're you okay with those because they're trying to make the right play. And there's a fair amount of those. Um, I think defenses overall in the league are really good this year. Um, I think teams with length at times have caused us problems that we don't necessarily see that in practice. So we have to adjust to that. Um, but I'm still pretty confident that this team can take care of the ball enough for us to continue to have success. And, and obviously it's something we talk about all the time. You know, the players are well aware that we are turning it over too much. It's no surprise to them. It's also something they continue to um, hopefully learn from not just on the court, but watching film is another thing, especially as we play teams a second time. Like, where did we not have success? Where did our turnovers happen, you know, against Bowling Green the first time? And how can we be better at it this time? I think sometimes that's an indicator of growth as well. And and this this team is pretty cerebral when it comes to that. So I think we'll continue to get better in that area. All right, last one. Um, what will the difference in this game versus the last Bowling Green game and what are some keys for tomorrow um, playing one of the top teams for the second time? Well, Bowling Green is probably, well, one of the one of the top defensive teams in the league. And so I say it all the time, we have to take care of the basketball because they're gonna really hound the ball handler. Um, they don't have great size necessarily. And so if we can handle their physicality, we'll be okay. I hope the result is the same. I hope that doesn't change, um, but, Again, Bowling Green will challenge you to, to stay on point all the time because they're not going to take plays off. So you definitely can't take plays off. I think uh, it'll be an entertaining ball game because I think there's a similar brand of basketball between the two teams. You know, both teams like to get up and down. They like to really get up and guard, play man to man, um, shoot the three. Uh, both teams, all five players on the floor, I think play really hard. And so um, Robin's done a great job at Bowling Green of really kind of instilling those things back into their program. 
and I feel like that's again what has led to some of our success. So uh, hopefully, I think you see two teams that are pretty evenly matched, um, and so it's just a matter of who makes more plays. All right, that's all you got. All right, thanks everybody. Again, I really hope that we get the opportunity to have some type of an event in April, and I know Deborah's going to come back up and kind of wrap that up. Um, but I would love to see you all besides in your little box uh, and sometimes hopefully or sometime hopefully soon uh, we can do that. So I'll have to pop back up real quick. We'll see you all later. Catch us tomorrow night, though. All right. Uh, yay. Happy. That was wonderful. Um, again, thanks for coming. Thanks for staying a little extra. That show was fun. It's fun for me as I like to be interactive. So hopefully you all learned a little bit about us and our student athletes, our staff. Um, you know, I, I joke with Coach Carlson, the best ops person is someone that I could talk to and I would never have to talk to the head coach. And I love talking to Coach Carlson. We run every day together. That's fine. But I wouldn't have to and I'd know what was going on. So I'm, I'm really thankful for point as well. Um, so yeah, coach mentioned uh, we're going to try to do something in April. Uh, it may look a lot like this. Uh, maybe it won't. Um, but uh, regardless, we'll, we'll make sure we keep you uh, posted as to what's next. Uh, keep following coaches' emails as far as games and changes. We still need to make up two against Kent. Um, so that that's still TBD. Um, we're working on that as well. We kind of take one at a time, plug it in, and then go. So. Um, Really appreciate everybody's support. This has been really, really great. Um, again, hopefully we're in person really soon. Don't forget about the golf outing on June 18th. Uh, we'll send some information out as soon as that's all, um, all organized. So again, if there's any questions you all have, concerns, you're not getting the right information, you don't know what's going on, you get an email from coach, you can also always contact me. I uh, really look forward to seeing everyone in person. Go Huskies. All right, see ya.